Good evening, and welcome to all visitors who are joining us today. Any visitors who wish to learn more about Church of the Ascension and parish life are invited to stop by the welcome desk in the gathering area after Mass. If you have not yet returned your 2017 stewardship commitment form, kindly return the form in the offertory collection or directly to the parish office. The Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary is this Thursday and is a holy day of obligation. Mass times are at 6.45 a.m., 8 a.m., noon, and 7 o'clock p.m. Ascension is serving at St. Mary's Food Kitchen this Friday. Please bring your food to the parish hall on or before 8.30 a.m. on Friday. Pans are available in the gathering area after all Masses. Catholic Charities Food Drive is next weekend before all Masses. Senior Catholic sisters, brothers, and religious order priests have offered their lives in service to others. Please give generously next weekend by using the Retirement Fund for Religious envelope and placing your donation in the basket with your regular tithing. If you are on auto debit and do not receive envelopes, extra envelopes will be available on the table in the gathering area. For more information on all events, pick up a bulletin or go to kcascension.org. The readings today are on 882 in the hymnal. Our presider today is Father Tom. Out of respect for Christ in the Eucharist, please remain with us until the final hymn is completed. As we joyfully proclaim, celebrate, witness, and serve Jesus Christ, let us now please stand and greet one another by name. Welcome to Ascension. We're so glad to be able to celebrate the Eucharist with you this evening on the second Sunday of Advent. Let's take just a moment to quiet our hearts and be ready for worship. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. That mourns in lowly exile here until the Son of God appears. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee. wisdom from on high, and order all things far and nearby, to us the path of knowledge show, and cause us in her ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord's grace, peace, and joy be with each of you. 
Today on this second Sunday of Advent, we are once again reminded of our preparation to be more open to Christ Jesus. And today the prophet, the great final prophet of the Old Testament, John the Baptist, proclaims that the kingdom of God is at hand to repent, to change our lives, to turn around, to live more faithfully. And so we pray that the light of Christ may be more fu fully expressed within our lives. And so as we light the second Advent candle, we pray that the Lord may dispel darkness and bring light through us and to us. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Come, Lord Jesus, reveal your light to all peoples. Kyrie eleison. Come, Christ Jesus, bring to all peoples hope and new life. Christi eleison. Christi eleison. Come, Lord Jesus, bring us to eternal light and life with you. Kyrie May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us an admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots, a bud shall blossom. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Not by appearance shall be judged, nor by hearsay shall he decide. But he shall judge the poor with justice and decide a right for the lands afflicted. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Justice shall be the band around his waist, and faithfulness a belt upon his hips. Then the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion shall browse together with the little child to guide them. The cow and the bear shall be neighbors. Together their young shall rest. The lion shall eat hay like the ox. The baby shall play by the cobra's den and the child lay his hand on the adder's lyre. There shall be no harm or ruin in all my holy mountain for the earth shall be filled with knowledge of the Lord as waters cover the seas. On that day, the root of Jesse, set up as a signal for the nations, the Gentiles shall seek out, for his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord.
Judgment and Doe the King, and with your justice, the King's Son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. shall all the tribes of the earth be blessed. All the nations shall proclaim his happiness. Justice shall flourish in his time. And fullness of peace A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, whatever was written previously was written for our instruction, that by endurance and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to think in harmony with one another, in keeping with Christ Jesus, that with one accord you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another then as Christ welcomed you for the glory of God. For I say that Christ became a minister of the circumcised to show God's truthfulness, to confirm the promises to the patriarchs but so that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As is written, therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. The word of the Lord. Amen. 
in the Lord. Let your word proclaim his deeds. Let your voice sing out to the world that our God has come to save. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. John the Baptist appeared preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was of him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said, A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and had a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locust and wild honey. Now at that time, Jerusalem, all Judea, and the whole region around the Jordan were going out to meet him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. Now when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, John said to them, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the upcoming wrath? Produce good fruit as evidence of your repentance. And do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God can raise up children to Abraham from these very stones. Even now the ax lies at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I am baptizing you with water for repentance, but the one who is coming after me is mightier than I. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. This second Sunday of Advent, we hear the cry of John the Baptist, the final prophet of the Old Testament, prophesying that the kingdom of God is at hand, that God is about to fulfill the promises that he had made throughout the whole history of salvation. It's an appropriate time for us to think about Matthew's gospel. You know, the the liturgical years are set up on a three-year cycle for Sunday readings around each one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And John is spread throughout all three years, particularly during sometime in Advent, Christmas, and then in Lent and Easter. But this is the year of Matthew. And so it might be helpful for us to kind of take a good look at Matthew's Gospel and of how the picture of Jesus that Matthew presents to us. For Matthew presents a unique portrait of Jesus, and it's a portrait. You know, we expect pictures rather than portraits. Pictures kind of give us what is there on the outside, and they can be very precise depending upon how many pixels we have in our camera. But the point of the gospel is not to give us a picture of Jesus, but rather each gospel writer presents a portrait of Christ. And a portrait tries to go beneath the surface and to bring out the deeper meaning, the deeper understanding, the deeper revelation of the person who is being portrayed. 
And that's the purpose of the different Gospels, is to bring out different dimensions of who is this Jesus of Nazareth, so that we may understand it more fully and recognize the depths and not just the surface. We're truly not just recognizing Jesus as an historical person, but truly as our Lord, our Savior, our God. And so Matthew's Gospel is particularly, or was particularly written not for Gentile Christians, but rather for Jewish Christians. And it was written so that the Jews might be invited to come to faith in Christ Jesus. And so it has a particularly Jewish quality to it, as opposed to Luke's gospel that we just finished in the last liturgical year, which was written for Gentile Christians. And so we find in Matthew's gospel, there's a lot of emphasis upon Jesus as the fulfillment of the Old Testament, that the Old Testament prophecies about the Messiah are being fulfilled in Jesus. And that's the particular message that Matthew wants to present to, so that his followers will recognize Jesus truly as the promised one. And not just as the Messiah as they expected him, but rather as something so much greater. One of the prophecies in the Old Testament had to do with Moses and said that in the future there would be a prophet who would be as great as Moses. And of course, Moses was the prophet par excellence in the Old Testament, having that experience of God. And so Jesus is seen as the fulfillment of that promise. Yes, he is the prophet as great as Moses, but actually much greater than Moses, as Matthew gives us that insight that he is not just human, but truly divine. And so there is that recognition, and the gospel is set up you know, in the Old Testament, they looked upon the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch. And the tradition was that those books were written by Moses. Scripture scholars would question that today because they evolved over a long period of time. But nevertheless, Matthew structures his gospel to show Jesus as giving five major discourses, reflecting the five books of the Pentateuch and that new message that he gives. Jesus is also pictured as Moses. As Moses went up to the top of Mount Sinai and received the law from God, Jesus goes up to the top of the Mount of the Beatitudes, not to receive the law, but to give the new law, to present the message through the Beatitudes, the new commandments within the new covenant. And so that whole message of Matthew is one of Jesus as fulfillment and surpassing all the Old Testament prophecies. The real juncture point in that is, is in the 16th chapter of Matthew's Gospel. And at that time, Jesus and his disciples are at Caesarea Philippi. And he says to the disciples, who do people say that I am? Jesus, in the first part of the gospel, has been revealing himself through his miracles and his teachings. And finally, he says to the apostles, who do people say that I am? And Peter responds, well, some say that you're a prophet. Some say that you're Elijah. Some say that you are the prophet. And then Jesus looks at him and says, but who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? And that's the crucial question, not only in Matthew's Gospel, but for each and every one of us. As we have been exposed to Christ, yes, we've heard many things, but who do we really say that Christ is in the depths of our heart? And Peter is the one who responds, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Peter makes that beautiful profession of faith a profession of faith in Jesus as truly being his Messiah, his Lord. It didn't prevent Peter from nevertheless being weak on occasion and even sinning and denying Christ. But nevertheless, he was on the road to discipleship because there was an intimate faith of putting on the mind and the heart of Christ in Peter's life. And so, 
the gospel then makes a twist and a turn. And Jesus begins to reflect much more about discipleship and what it means to be a disciple and how if you're going to follow the Messiah, the Messiah is going to suffer and to die and that we must take up our cross and follow him. And the rest of the gospel talks about the remainder of that journey and some of the dangers that are there in following Jesus as a disciple, but also the great richness of salvation that is there because of our life in Christ. And finally, we come to that suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And we are invited and reminded that a disciple is one who's willing to take up his cross and walk the way with Jesus as Jesus walks that way of life with us. And finally, the resurrection in Jesus overcoming the power of sin and death. And then the gospel concludes with the ascension. And in the ascension in Matthew's gospel, it's a little different because Jesus there says, full authority on heaven and on earth has been given to me. And I say to you, go and preach the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news, the message that I have shared with you and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That Jesus says, if we're really going to be disciples, we have to be missionary disciples. That we are called to evangelization. We are called to spread the faith, to share the faith. And so it's a whole gospel, not just of one of personal salvation through our faith in Christ, but also of commitment to sharing that faith with others. And Jesus says that he's with us always, that he'll never abandon us. During this year of Matthew, I hope that we will come to a deeper appreciation of who Jesus is, of putting on his mind and his heart, of being transformed by his love for us, and of our own call to be disciples and to be witnesses to Christ within our lives. St. Jerome had an interesting statement. He says, ignorance of Scripture is ignorance of Jesus, which also means knowledge of Scripture means a knowledge of Jesus. We don't just read Scripture in order to somehow be familiar with it, but rather to have a true knowledge and understanding of who Jesus is and what it means to have life in his name and the call that we have to witness to our faith. I encourage you during the rest of Advent that you read through the whole Gospel of Matthew. You know, we'll have sections of it week after week after week, particularly during ordinary time, but it's good to read it as a whole, to see the whole flow of it, the whole, the whole message of it, and then it will make a lot more sense as week after week we have those smaller sections every Sunday in our gospel readings. Because Jesus truly wants to speak to our hearts. The portrait that Matthew presents to us is of a loving Savior, of a God become flesh for our salvation, of a God who continues to be with us in the Eucharist, in his scripture, in the gift of others of God who shares, sends us forth to be his witnesses to the world. That is the message of Matthew. That is the message of Jesus. Let us join together in our profession of faith as together we proclaim, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, and God from God, the light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father,
Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered in Advent hope, we offer these prayers. For the church, called to hear and live the Baptist words of repentance, for the people and clergy of our archdiocese, and for the prophetic voices of the gospel throughout the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who hold leadership positions in government, that God will touch their hearts and guide them in developing policies that will promote the greater good. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For divided or alienated families, that God's healing love may transform hearts and bring forth new relationships where there is injury and brokenness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That the Spirit of the Lord may rest upon the poor, the sick, and the lonely, and the dying. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our newly married Evan and Michelle Samsel, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who have died, our loved ones and those who have gone before us in this parish, especially Peggy Manning, mother of Connor, Michael Laddie, father of Joe, Bradley Gregson, brother of Barry, that God will become, welcome them into the heavenly kingdom with all the saints. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the intentions listed in our bulletin, intentions dropped in our petitions box, and for the intentions that are in our silent hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our parish intention this week, for renewed openness to the coming Christ, and for all the intentions we bring to this Mass, especially for Joe and Francis Esposito family. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all the victims of the uh, tragedy in California and for their families, for all those who experience suffering and loss. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And on the inside back cover of your hymnal, we could join in our prayer for evangelization. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, stir in my soul the desire to renew my faith and to deepen my relationship with Christ Jesus so that I might more fully live the good news of your love for all people. Open my heart to hear the message of Jesus, crucified and risen for us all. Grant me the confidence to proclaim this good news to others through my daily words and actions. God, our Father, I pray that through the Holy Spirit, I might respond to the call of Jesus to a renewed proclamation of the gospel. Help me to deepen my own faith, grow in confidence to proclaim your truth and love, and boldly witness to the saving grace of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The children are now invited to bring forward their gifts of food for the poor and hungry and place them in baskets on the sanctuary steps.
prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way. Prepare the way. Prepare the way of the Lord. Jesus, 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 Jesus. my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. With your lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, 
Sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Holy Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, this memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his everlasting love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, with James, all the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Gathered together as the family of God, we pray in the words that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord Jesus be with each of you. Thank you, and let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, truly the Lord Jesus, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring each one of us to life everlasting.
this nation awakening holy spirit we desire Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to those of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. This coming Thursday is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. 
which is not only a holy day of obligation, but Mary, under the title of the Immaculate Conception, is the patroness of our country. And certainly our country needs prayers at this time, that there may be healing of divisions, and that we may move forward in a positive way and for God's protection for us. And so we ask that through the intercession of Mary. So the Masses on Thursday are 645, 8 o'clock, 12 noon, and 7 p.m. And so we hope to see you on Thursday. And hope all of you have a great evening and a wonderful week. And the Lord be with you. And let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessings. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit descend upon you, remain with you this week and forever. Amen. Our Mass is ending. Let us go now to live what we celebrate. Thanks be to God. I will sing a song of hope, sing along. God of heaven, come down, heaven, come down. Just to know that you are near is enough. God of heaven, come down, heaven, come down. All things bright and beautiful you are. All things wise and wonderful you in my darkest night, you brighten up the skies, a song will rise. I will sing a song of hope, sing along, God of heaven come down, heaven come down. Just to know that you are near is enough, God of heaven come down, heaven come down.